Do you want me to start? Do you know what we're filming? So today we're talking all things porting. So you're gonna show us the Renaissance uh, ports? I do have those up there actually. I didn't pull them down. F that engine. I'm not showing that shit at all. It's garbage. Welcome to Full Boost. Today we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know about rotary porting. So why do we port an engine? Well, essentially, more airflow into an engine, the more horsepower you're gonna make. So it doesn't matter if it's a rotary, uh, two-stroke, or even um, your normal V8 or whatever engine you've got out there, more air you can get in or out, the more horsepower you're gonna make. So the best thing about rotary porting is it's actually broken down into different names. So people have actually given the different ports a different names, which makes it really easy to identify what style of port it is if you're maybe buying an engine or you're telling someone like myself who builds engines what kind of port you want. So essentially it's a standard, the standard port, which is as per factory. Uh, there's a mild port, extend port, uh, a turbo style bridge port, uh, a full race style bridge port, a J port, a monster port, Semi peripheral port. port. Now that's the 1990s <laughs> all over. That's the that's that's even the 80s. Yeah, that's, that that goes back. Um, don't see much of that these days. Well, then there's the full peripheral port. So it's full race race style engine of that. So um, we're going to have a run through some of these engines we've got uh, here now, and just give you an idea of what all that porting means and what it means for not just power but also drivability too. All right, Brimmy, why don't you run us through what the first plate is? Yeah. So this plate here is actually. Uh, so this is from an FD, so the port is actually a lot bigger than say your, your early style RX4 13B or, or 12A or, or even the Series 4 or 5 RX7 engines. This is actually pretty close to what you might call an, an extend port or, or even just a mild port. You can see up here by far and away that the actual port size and shape is pretty standard and there's just a little bit of port work that's done up, up here. So um, you can see it's still quite rough here in the casting and the actual factory size and shape of it is still retained. So this is pretty much like for like a, a mild port. So it, it keeps all the drivability of the factory port. It allows a little bit more airflow um, and yeah, drivability isn't, isn't pretty affected. Pretty much uh, like your idle is pretty much unaffected. Yeah, so it, your idle won't have any, any lope to it. You wouldn't really notice. If you were standing next to a mild port car idling, you're not really going to notice any, any difference. You may have a little bit more um, performance, so your performance might increase a bit, but it's, it's not going to affect drivability that so much. So the next one you'd step up to would be an extend port. So with an extend port, what might happen is this port might be a bit bigger here. The exit might also be a little bit larger and, and also out here. If there is more room to go in towards where the, you know, the, the side seal trace is, it may go there. It also may start porting work on, on the entry to the port as well as inside the tunnel and smoothing all that there. Uh, and again, extend port's still very much like a, a mild port, although with the extend port, depending on how, how big and how aggressive you go, you can start noticing it at idle. That there can be a little bit of a, a change in the exhaust note. It's probably be a bit more barkier. <laughs> The car will also increase in, in power because of the increased airflow as well. So uh, obviously the detractors uh, that there's a little tiny drop in drivability, not much, but uh, but of course with increased airflow to make that power means you have to use more fuel. So fuel economy will um, will be affected. So pretty much anyone who's got a a street car, uh, especially if it's a turbo street car, um, I recommend this over every other port. Everyone loves the bridge ports and, and that, but um, they're not very drivable on the street. They don't have much street manners. They, they can be really difficult to drive, especially with a, a manual. They can be very bucky and jerky when you're off throttle um, because they have, it, it's like a two stroke dirt bike. The power bands move so much further up on the curb and the airspeed, especially with a natural aspirated one, needs to be much higher for it to work properly. Um, that I always recommend extend A, a car we featured recently on Full Boost, um, Marcos's wagon had a, similar to sort of engine setup to this. And it yeah. was really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, everyone wants the bridge port. Every single time a customer in, they want to build an engine, they want a bridge port. I fight the tooth and nail to say, trust me, I've been doing it long enough. You, you don't want a bridge port unless it's naturally aspirated and it's a total weekender and they want a bridge port. Unless they really want a bridge port, then, you know, I, I say yes. But I, I know quite a few um, customers who I've, I've built bridge ports for 
and then they sort of regret it later because they didn't realize the impact on drivability it would have. So, so you end up with, a, in essence, you end up with a car that, I guess the term hunting comes into play, like, like you're driving around a car park. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Yeah. Especially a lot of these cars are manual. It's, yeah, especially when in a, in a manual um, and the clutch, you know, you're increasing power, so you're increasing clamping rate right on, on the clutch. You pop the clutch and there's no, you know, there's no airspeed and there's no power, there's no torque. I mean, it's rotary engine already, but it doesn't make any low down torque basically. Mm. Um, so you have that issue of there's no power there and they'll, you're on and off the throttle in the car, so you can see them, they, they, they lunge forward and jerk forward and it's it's not an overly great driving experience. Um, when they're up and running and revving, there's nothing yeah. like it. But in that, you know, for but someone- most of the time on the street, street, street when we're not in the- yeah. Power bench, yeah, so I mean, if it's a streeter that's just going to be used as a casual cruiser and you're never going to race it, um, I, I strongly try and recommend guys not to go to Bridgeport. Um, they, they are great, they sound great, the attitude of the car shaking, that's all awesome, but your driving experience um, could often, um, you know, be at the detriment of that. So, so this, is a, this is a port that's talked about a lot these yep. days, I guess. Yep. So why don't you explain so, a, bit, a bit about this one? This, this style uh, is also a bridge port. Um, there's, there's many different names. When they first come out, because um, originally back in, if you go back well, close to like 20 odd years now, turbo engines never ever were bridge ported. No, never. So it, yeah. it, was, it was almost taboo. Oh, you can't do the overlap. You cannot turbo a, a, um, so a, the, a bridge the, com the common myth was your boost is just yeah, um, that being evacuated ma that due to the big overlap, it's it's just gonna um, yeah, it's gonna blow out the intake ports. When, so when a few guys started building turbo bridge ports, it was pretty like wow. That's, yeah, that's yeah, and, out there. And, and this is sort of where it come from. And I mean, so they were either called secondary bridge ports or turbo bridge ports, or even um, a lot of people referred to them as tic tac ports because you can see that it's just a, like a little tic tac here uh, port that's um, complementing the normal extend port. So what what this does is is it, the reason um, they've done just this small port is you can see here on the actual full large race style bridge port, if, you, if you're going to call it that, how big the port is here. And this increases um, overlap between where the exhaust normally exits and when the rotor opens. So with that overlap is where you get that really strong brat. <laughs> What this does is cut down on that overlap. Uh, it also means you can play with your intake timing a lot better. So in, in race engines, you might want more intake duration. So you might port this just down here to, to make sure you maintain that intake duration as well. So you can see clearly the difference between the, the turbo bridge port or the full bridge port. So the full bridge port, like in our how to bridge port a rotary engine video that we filmed. So has a full bridge here. Uh, you can, and the bridge is this. So this is a seal trace for the, the corner seal. So if this bridge wasn't here and you did one big massive port, the corner seal, which is this. That's a good point, because I often see that in yeah. comments. Why can't you Why can't you take all of this yeah, out? Yeah, so, so what would happen is this, if that wasn't here, th this is where it goes essentially. So what would happen is that it would just fall in there. And you know, that, that would be it. So, there's a spring behind there, the apex seal, everything's retained in that. So if you didn't have that, it would just fall straight into the port and, and that's it. it, it would be done. So there, there is uh, also with the porting, you can see here that there's a nice smooth transition here. So that, that relates to these. So you've got uh, the side seal coming up here and entering into the port and you want a nice transition here because if that was just a, a harsh flat edge, what can happen is the side seal can, obviously when it's being expelled out of the rotor due to the spring, it could hit on there and just snap off or, or, or dent into the rotor. So that's pretty common with porting that's not done in the correct manner as well. So you, you want a nice chamfer on, on the exit of the port up there as well. So a couple of ports that aren't here and I never really bother getting into are things like what you call a J port or a monster port. So you can see here this trace here. This trace here is where a water seal groove goes. Um, or, or this this, this um, groove here is the, is the water seal groove. So, so water flows through this engine to cool it here. And you've got a seal here and another seal here that seals the outside of the engine and the inside the combustion part of the engine away from that water. Now, what some of these big race uh, J port engines or monster port engines do is cut into here and utilize all this area. So if we just slide this out here, you can see that if you were to cut out 
obviously this is the combustion area of the rotor. Now if you were to cut out all this area here, you've got even more room for air to flow through. So what they do is cut the water seal here, cut the water seal here, pin it so it can't move and, it, and it's got something to butt up against when it, when it squeezes under tension. And then you might fill all this area in here with, with epoxy uh, or some kind of thing like JB Weld or, or DevCon or something. So no more water can flow through and it's totally sealed. And that also then gives extra, extra airflow here. Now that the benefits that are obviously horsepower because you're creating uh, more path for more airflow, uh, the, the detracting points to that are very, very decreased engine life. Obviously, you know, you, you've taken one, a solid O-ring here and you've cut it in half mm. and you're expecting it to, to survive and live um, with high pressure water and high heat and high heat cycle, cycles there. And you're also just filling this with a liquid metal, so to speak. So it's not really cast in this way and it's not meant to be this way. So um, failure through essentially the O-ring failure is, is pretty much um, par for the course with, with J ports and monster ports after, you know, after pretty low amount of kilometers generally compared to all, the, all these other engines, you know, just your normal bridge port, turbo bridge port, extend port, whatever, they will operate as a normal engine yeah. um, throughout the life cycle. <coughs> I used to engine. hear back in the day, a lot of people would say, you know, f sort of 5,000 Ks, you'd be pulling the engine down. Yeah, for, for I mean, monster porting and J porting are really race, race yeah. engine only. Um, there's a lot of racing classes that don't permit you to go past the water seal. Uh, in Australia, we've got a class called uh, Improved Production, IPRA, and they don't allow you to cut into the water seal. So there's actually a lot of racing classes like that in, o over the world that, that say you cannot cut into the, the water jacket there. So this is a completely different uh, type of porting. Why don't you run us through the difference between this and this, and then what else can be done on that, on that part of the housing? Yeah, so we're moving over to the exhaust housings now. So most of the, obviously the, the factory porting, the intake porting is on the irons or the plates. This is, the, this is next level porting basically for intake. So we're still only talking about the intake here. So you can see here, this is early engines may have a, a, a hole in here, a small hole where, where water passes through. Um, but you can see here on this is a series six a thick plate as well, uh, housing. You can see here that it's totally blocked. So um, water will normally pass through here, but you can see the housing, nothing here, no, no hole at all there. What this is, and this is something that's really come in vogue in the last five or so years, is called a semi-PP. So you may have seen and heard of a peripheral port, which is essentially a, a giant pipe hanging out of here where they drill like a- It looks like an inlet trumpet. Yeah, it, it's huge. It? So they, they might drill like a 45 mil of water hole in here or even bigger um you know it could be 50 plus mil hole um for 50 mil pipe so to basically come out of it here. looks like a copy of that sort of thing yeah it, it's i mean you'll see that yeah you, you'll see that up here pretty much and and it passes all the way through the intake What happened a few years ago was people started um, playing with these and this is what, what's called a semi-PP. So you can see there, uh, they've turned that hole, they've drilled it out and then an insert is put in here and obviously there's a there's an O-ring recess there so it all seals and so they, they have, seal it up. They with, seal it up yep. so there's no water goes. So, so this work is done, uh, this one was done by South Coast Rotary. Um, they do all this kind of uh, machine work and, and peripheral, um, peripheral and semi-PP porting and all the other engine porting that do, do too. So I got them to do, to do these for me. And you can see now, there's the big hole. So again, what's the benefit of this? Well, increased airflow. Increased airflow means horsepower and um, you know, we're, we're modifying engines here to make, to make power. So, that, so that's the So with a semi-PP, we're still, we're still running your traditional Inlet port on yeah, the plate. So, so unlike with a normal peripheral port where they'll they'll essentially, you know, use DevCon or, or JB Weld or whatever it is to block off the, the ports that are in the iron and only use the port that's in the housing, what this does is utilize so the port in the port. iron. They, they line up, you can see here where they sit, so they line up at the same point. You can see basically the semi-PP lines up right in the middle pretty much of that port there. The only issue I guess with doing semi-PP is what you do about um, an intake manifold. So th these, with the porting when it's in the iron, it just uses your standard intake manifold. So here's your normal 
FD lower intake manifold. You can see you've got all your ports set up here. So your secondaries and your, your two smaller primaries. But if I was to semi PP this FD, FD engine, what do I do with the intake manifold? Yeah. So what, what a lot of people do is drill big ugly holes in here and then weld, like they'll cut out a section of the runner and then try and cut and shut another it's runner off this runner. It, it looks a bit messy. And also, I mean, welding with cast aluminium is, is, is very, not just difficult, but it looks ugly because cast inherently is full of porosity and, and junk. So what um, what South Coast Rotary also have with to, to go along with the work that they do to do semi-PP engine, they've actually made this cast manifold. So the best thing about cast is obviously in here. You can here see the extra port there. Yeah. But that's this bit, obviously. So this cast aluminium versus if you were just to fabricate something up yourself um, is much stronger um, because it's much thicker. Flip it over this side and you can see the difference. Yep. So you can see the ports there. Six holes instead of four, yep. effectively. And, and also the, the biggest thing about this manifold is you'll see that this has four injector ports. So like us with, with our race rotaries, you now that you need, that you're making more power, more power also needs more fuel. So the factory manifold's only got two injectors here and you've got two in the center plate. Now what we can have here is four in the manifold and two in the center plate. So essentially you've been able to put another two injectors in here, which means you've also solved another problem with this manifold of how you get more fuel into the engine. Um, so this is a really, really great piece. So if you've got, I think it's FD and Cosmo, this will fit. So if you've got an FD or Cosmo engine that you are upgrading, that you want to do the semi-PP, uh, the guys at South Coast Rotary make this manifold and also do all this work. Yeah. Um, it's which, a nice, which, nice bit of gear. Though. Yeah, which makes it makes the job so, so much easier. So a lot of the other porting you could do at home if you wanted to have a go. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with having a go at some of the porting if, if you want to try your hand at that and if you're confident in doing it. But this semi-PP stuff needs to be done by a, a professional. Um, and yeah, the, the guys at South Coast are, are that. That's why we, you know, I mean, we've got all the machines to, to do this, but I send this stuff out even myself to, to the pros to, to get this kind of work done. So just got those back now and they'll be going in our race car shortly. So we'll do another video on that later, but that's pretty much all the intake porting. So the only other part for porting for a rotary is the exhaust. So you, you're putting more air into the engine. You've got to get all that extra air out. So this is a factory untouched port. So you can see here the standard exhaust port. It's, it's actually quite small. It, it does flow fairly well, but you can see I've put some green texture in there. And if I'll just turn this around this way, you can see there where there is sort of a, a difference between the outside of the port versus the inside. Traditionally, what a lot of rotary guys might do is, is port some of that out. So, and also it's pretty common to sort of just square off some of these and maybe just sort of round this off up the top a bit there and that base and the rounding of the the reason why a lot of people might not square off the top and, and just leave it around it again is just to that overlap reason of um, maintaining the exhaust pulse where it needs to and then yeah so you might just flatten out this and then just smooth it out to finish but that's pretty much all it needs to do the, the exhaust ports do flow fairly well um, on their own and a lot of people sometimes even don't even touch them at all in these cosmo and fd engines so that's it, rotary porting. We hope you learned something about mild ports, extend ports, bridge ports, secondary bridge ports, semi-PP, peripheral port. There's a lot to learn there. So, you know, probably a good video to share out to a lot of people so they really know what uh, rotary porting is all about. Uh, keep watching the channel because we've got a lot more rotary content coming. But for now, that's it. See you next time.